G'day. Well, why let a pandemic go by without doing a COVID test? The other day I was given one of these rat tests or rapid antigen tests, which is a quick resulting test to see if you have COVID or one of the strains of COVID. I'm not concerned. However, I did go to bed last night with a little bit of sniffles and have had a bit of a headache, mild headache ever since. So I thought, well, why not try them? And uh, normally I'd say a little disclaimer that this is not medical advice. However, on this occasion, this is the medical advice currently given. I'm in Queensland, Australia at the time of filming that people can either go to uh, uh, line up for hours at a testing centre or do one of these rapid antigen tests which were in very short supply for a while. So this particular one, the first thing when I was given it was uh, check where it was made and of course it's uh, no surprise. I'll do a close-up shot here. Made in the People's Republic of China. And apparently in Australia there's a company that offered to supply the government the tests. They make a hundred thousand tests a day. Still the government chose to, um, as far as I know, all of these come from China. So nothing like a government that supports their own country. So I'm not going to be political. There's much I could say. Stick around at the end and I'll give you my very heavily censored opinion on things. I'm not going to go into any extremism either way. But yeah, there's much I can't say on YouTube these days because, uh, yeah, I don't want to strike a guideline strike again. So anyway, if you want to, you can stay to the end of the video because I'll have a little bit more to say and also there's a link at the end with some of my um, health playlists. But for now, if you want to just see the, how we do this test, feel free to do that. If you want to watch one of my other videos afterwards, you're welcome to do that too. So, you've mainly come here, no doubt, to see how these work. So I'm going to experience it for the very first time and show you, according to the instructions, what it's like. So let's open the box first. So as best I can, filming this on my own, I'm going to show you what's in the box first. And we'll work out together how to do it. Um, you can see on the back here it says that is what a positive test looks like. That's a negative test. That one's an invalid test. There's a hole there. I don't know what that is yet. Press and insert, pre-fill, buffer vial below. Well, obviously you have to open it up, so... Forgive anything that's not quite in shot. Okay, so... Okay, instructions. Hmm. So there's, in this one, there's five test cassettes. I remember the days of cassettes. Couldn't stick one of those in your car cassette player. <laughs> and also... Hmm. Really needs... Either less instructions or more. Okay, so there's five, oh, this is not easy. five coincidental or coincidental or whatever you want to say, swabs. Okay, that's pretty long. <laughs> now, this is going to go right in your nose, I think. Oh, my goodness. Point is, uh, yeah, the reason why I've thought today would be a good day to try one of these tests is... Although I don't have much concern about having COVID because where I tend to hang out, um, I don't, well, I certainly don't hug shopkeepers and, yeah, mainly outside places that I sit. However, the other person living in the house is quite active, so, yeah, you never know. All right, well, hmm. Yeah, my point is that I do have a little bit of the sniffles today. 
and a mild headache since last night so I thought it's a good opportunity to to try one of these tests out. Let's just have a read of the instructions and then we'll go ahead and do the test. Right, let's look at the instructions. Give you a shot of that. Okay, so step one, wash your hands. Step two, remove the test cassette. Step three, insert. Step four, peel. Step five, insert tip. 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters up your nose hole. Oh, blow nose first, that's a good idea. Step five, basically stick it in your nostril for 15 seconds. Rotate it for 15 seconds, no? Hmm. Rotate the swab five times while stroking the inside of the first nostril for 15 seconds. Oh, using the same swab, it says in step 7, if you can see that, repeat the process for the second nostril. Right, then you insert the swab into the tube, rotate for 10 seconds, step 9, squeeze, remove, step 10, insert tip, right, this is complex. Okay, step 11, squeeze three drops of the sample solution. Step 12, read the result at 10 to 15 minutes. Do not read result after 15 minutes. Okay. I'll speed that up greatly once we start the test. Disposal test items. Okay. And there down the bottom there is the... Let me read the results. We'll get to that. And here's the... Well, it's quite a lot to read. Okay, so just skipping through, obviously read all of this before you do the test. Uh, one particular part, how accurate is the test? Between 93.2% and 99.2, up to 97.5. Anyway, read everything before you do the test. You can read that in your own time when you get a test kit. Let's see how we go. So step one, let's go wash our hands. Okay, so I've just washed my hands. Step two is remove the ca test cassette, which is one of these. Now let's remove it. Again, sorry if the framing's not great, but not that easy to do on my own. Okay, here's a test cassette. My very first time to see one. Okay. Step three. Hmm. Okay. Insert the pre-filled buffer tube into the perforated hole in the outer box. Well, let's poke the hole in the box first. Get one of these swabs. Remember, wash your hands first. A little bit nerve-wracking. Okay. So, right. We put this thing here, the pre-filled buffer, into the perforated hole. There. Let's push him down there a bit. Peel. Okay, peeling. Trying to not block the shot. Peeled. <laughs> Alright, now the unpleasant bit. <laughs> Shove this up your nose. Okay, now the unpleasant part. Get a swab here. I've just blown my nose, as per instructions. Okay, don't touch the swab with your fingers. Okay, it says blow nose first, I've done that, then insert swab absorbent tip, which is this end here, into the first of your two nostrils. As long as you have two nostrils, you'll be fine. I happen to have two. Uh, okay, 1.5 centimeters to 2.5 centimeters so um, if you've got a test kit in the states or another country it'll say inches probably but anyway so that's well I guess it's a well there's a mark there I don't know if you can see it probably not it's about up to there oh goodness here we go you insert it in and then 
Rotate the swab five times while stroking the inside of the first nostril for 15 seconds. Let's do that, then you repeat on the other side. Here we go. Uh, well, I can't, oh boy, that's quite up. I think, well, I feel pressure. Oh, so rotating it. Okay, it doesn't hurt, it's not comfortable. I'm trying to. Uh, Make sure to sneeze actually. <laughs> Alright, let's take it out. <laughs> Excuse me. That's pretty close. I'm still recording. So, okay. Rotate the swab five times while stroking the inside of the first nostril for 15 seconds. We did that. Using the same swab, repeat the process for the second nostril. Okay. Yeah, more fun. Here we go. Uh, right. I wouldn't recommend it as a hobby. It does make you want to sneeze. Uh, I'm pushing fairly firmly. I'm going to sneeze. So I'm going up and down like it says. Uh, No, well, I don't know how people do their driving tests. <laughs> it's eye watering for sure. Okay, so it's still got the swab. Done both nostrils. Maybe I was a little bit short of time, but I had to sneeze. So without stopping the camera, um, we've done that. I've repeated the process. Okay, insert the swab into the tube. Rotate for 10 seconds while pressing the swab head against the side of the tube. Now spin the camera around and do that. Okay. Right, so you take your sample and as per number eight, if you can read that, insert the swab into the tube Rotate for 10 seconds while pressing the swab head against the side of the tube. Then you remove it. And you insert that tip. Okay, well, here we go. Into there, hope you can see this. I'm doing the best I can for you. Rotate for 10 seconds while pressing it. I might just hold that. While pressing it against the side of the tube. Feel free to count along with me here. <laughs> Sorry if I'm blocking the shot. Okay. Remove the swab while squeezing the tube side to expel in the liquid. Okay. All right. Guess that's right. I'll put them over here to be disposed of in the empty packet. Then insert the tip this way. Trying not to stay still. All right, okay. Insert tip, yes. Oh, no, I want to blow my nose. Place the dropper tip firmly into the extraction tube. We've done that, which I hope you can see. Next. Oh, man. Okay. Next. Squeeze three drops of the sample solution into the S, uh, I see. And for this I'm going to have this clock here, which I'll speed up so you can see I'm not going to stop recording. Excuse me, I've definitely got the sniffles. <laughs> okay. Uh, once, we, oh, once we start the test, uh, I will speed this up. I'm not going to make you sit for 10 or 15 minutes. So then, Squeeze three drops of that sample solution we just did into the S, which is there. Sample well and start the timer. Let's zoom in and focus. Okay. 
Okay. There. Squeeze three drops of the solution. Okay. Take out the hole. Oh, it's a dropper. Yeah. Squeeze, squeeze three drops of the sample solution into the S sample well and start the timer. We're at 2.55 in the afternoon. Three drops going now. One, two, three. Yuck. Ooh, that's a good drop. And let's speed it up. We'll go the whole 15 minutes from now. Enjoy. Five minutes in, and we're coming up negative, which is good. I should actually have had this over here more so you can see the results. More than Slightly. Yeah. Okay, well, as I suspected, you can see just the one line next to the C equals negative. That's good. Okay, well, we have our results. Negative. I figured as much. I seriously wasn't concerned. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't have been really concerned if it did come up positive. Because, again, based on the science, if you research it, I'll leave a link below to one of the um, reports. It, uh, luckily, with uh, pretty well, apparently across the world, the only variant left of COVID-19, which as we know is SARS-CoV-2, or the latest variant of it, Omicron, or I believe the latest variant of that is Omicron 2. There's been about 400 strains of Omicron. Luckily, it's pretty well the only one left in the planet by all accounts, and as opposed to the original couple of strains, they're not a deep lung infection, it's upper respiratory tract. So again, you typically would get symptoms if you get them at all, because a lot of people are asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms. Luckily, the latest strain is just an upper respiratory tract infection, typically, not deep lung. So anyone that does display symptoms, it's usually the runny nose, Headache. Uh, been, everyone gets a little bit different effects apparently, but basically that's a guideline if you have any symptoms at all. Now I wasn't concerned simply because of the fact that lately, like last week, I spent two hours buffing all the scratches out from uh, Phil's dog on my last trip, the trip out west, and um, yeah. Well, first of all, when I was out there, as I said on my live stream recently, um, it was raining lightly through the night, so I was going out in the middle of the night having a smoke, which, by the way, also lowers your immune system. So you shouldn't smoke, but if you do, that's life. So there was that, and when I was buffing out the scratches when I came home, two hours, it was the most humid day I've encountered in at least a year. And I was drenched, literally drenched like my shorts had been like you've taken them out of the wash tub and they were wet jumped in the pool blah blah and the next days were cool in fact the last two nights have been quite cool i've had to put a uh, jumper on 
So that would be why I think, uh, you know, I've got a slight cold. It's not bad, just more of a headache. I'll tell you one thing, after doing this test though, <laughs> um, sticking that swab up your nose, as you saw, it made me sneeze. So, um, yeah, any sniffles now, I think it's just from that. So I wasn't concerned for those reasons. I hope that's helped you understand how to do the test. It makes sense now that I've done it. Read the instructions thoroughly. What I was going to say is in a very limited way because of, well, basically you can't say too much on YouTube without, you know, getting into trouble against guidelines that are constantly changing. If it was the old days, there'd be an awful lot I'd say about an awful lot, but I haven't for those reasons. You'll find if you're on Facebook, Certain people have been temporarily banned for saying anything, you know, questionable. So I say this basically, strategically, there are two extreme sides, I'm sure you're all aware of, after two years, one side says this, one side says this. I think it's somewhere in the middle. I think it's ironic, of course, that the test is made in China. And I think it stinks that, in our case, those 100,000 tests a day made in Australia are being sent to the USA. Having said that, friends in the USA have said that also the tests over there are coming from China as well. So yeah, somebody um, is, is doing all right out of the whole thing, which is good for them. I think uh, all of the mask, must wear mask stickers on the windows and all of the trillions of stand so far apart from people on the floors of just about every shop they're probably all made in the same country. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I won't go into any politics, uh, for example, how a lot of us think it was very unwise to open the borders to where I live in Queensland, to New South Wales and Victoria during their peak. And of course now um, <laughs> it's spread everywhere in Queensland. I'll leave it at that. It is what it is, whether we like it or not, the powers that be make the laws, whether it's state or federal, and we just have to deal with it no matter what comes along. So, yeah, okay, so I don't have COVID-19, or um, whatever you want to call it before that. I did initially, when the whole thing spread, or before it spread, make a couple of videos where I basically said uh, what should be done is lock down every country and as I said back then most countries didn't do that straight away because money is more important than anything as we've all come to see and again the same with uh, tourism so uh, yeah it's the way it is I think and I've I've said this all along if not on YouTube certainly to a lot of people looking back at previous pandemics nothing really has changed in the way it's treated the restrictions and all that whatever they did back then they've done now end result was pretty well still the same uh, and as I've always known typically by the third wave which we've now all gone through and starting to decline in pretty well every area daily cases by the third wave it's it's far less dangerous to the average person obviously to very elderly people and immunocompromised people there is a higher risk but as the virus and the same with the um, influenza virus pandemic of a hundred-ish years ago which was uh, H1N1 or swine flu same sort of deal. By the time the third wave came along, it was far more virulent, meaning it spreads a lot easier, but not as dangerous, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, until we're back to normal, by all scientific accounts, as I've thought as well, this will soon, pretty soon, be classed as endemic, meaning it'll be common as far as like the colds and flus that there always have been. No doubt they will incorporate it I guess into future flu shots if you get those. So yeah, alright and the main thing is 
a lot of people don't understand and the research is there if you want to search for it it's not like okay I heard the state government say yesterday you know COVID-19 is in every square inch of the state the trouble with saying things like that a lot of people take it the wrong way thinking it's literally like there's some there's some they mean in all areas they're stating but unfortunately when you see people driving with masks on in the car alone or walking in car parks with no one around walking on the streets with no one around and it is not currently law you have to wear masks in Queensland outdoors only inside inside of venues not in your own home well it's just a sad reality that people don't understand how viruses work I first became interested in viruses oh, 40 years ago good book to read is The Hot Zone now, I always remember that one so yes, yeah, stay vigilant for the time being I mean just do what most of us have been doing when you go into a shop or something just I always carry sanitizer in the cars anyway just do the hands and keep that up long after the pandemic's over keep doing that because that should bring down the frequency of colds and flus etc so that is a good thing to remember I think that I've covered everything here I address certain issues like masks before so carefully on the topic I just mentioned with masks I will tactfully um, <laughs> Uh, instead of making a statement, I'll tactfully ask a question. How effective that has been in the US and other countries, also in Australia, in Melbourne and Sydney areas. I will say this, if you have screen doors, you know, to keep mosquitoes out, um, throw a glass of water through the screen, see how much water that stops. I think that'll be effective enough to... Uh, get my point across or my question without it actually being a statement that YouTube can block. See if you understand what I'm getting at. And does it prevent things in the other way? Let's try. What do you think of the science now? Unfortunately, I think that went over the heads of a few, well, quite a few people. Probably thought I meant the other way around, but yeah. Uh, if you can work out what I'm saying, it's like, let's just say nothing's really great protection. You can do little things like sanitise, etc. We'll leave it at that because I don't want to um, push my luck with YouTube guidelines. The main thing is I've now shown you and me how these uh, rapid antigen tests, or as they call them, RAT, not, not brief antigen tests, which would be BAT, how they work. So you've seen what I've seen. Once again, oop, that's not going to focus. Once again, the single line up the top means negative. You should monitor for symptoms if you're, you know, a bit sniffly or headache, whatever, as you would normally. If you are positive, as you've seen in the chart, there would be two lines here. One next to the C, which is control, and the other one is next to the T. And if you have a false test, it'll also show you on the diagram what that looks like. that will be just a single line next to the T. But this one, as you saw clearly, quite quickly showed up with the result so yeah leave it uh, what uh, just follow the instructions that's how you do it that's my first and hopefully only covid test yeah there we go so stay safe stay well stay logical is my message don't be paranoid about something um, especially with the current strain and by all accounts and expectations it's not going to mutate into something 
like the previous versions we had. All right, cheers everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to blow my nose again because it, it definitely made me sneeze. And check out my uh, playlists. Uh, I have some health playlists too that may help you. And also in dealing with the anxiety involved with the whole thing. It should be over pretty soon. Okay. Cheers. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.